Our first guest is an award-winning writer who was raised in Martinsville, Virginia and currently lives in Charlottesville. Kristen Page Madonia is an author and creative writing teacher. Her latest novel, her second, is called Invisible Fault Lines. It just came out a few months ago. Kristen Page Madonia back with us today to share why she's here in Richmond today and to tell us about her latest novel. Good morning and welcome back. Thank you for having me. We were just chatting and, and you were saying last time you were here, you're pregnant. I was you pretty pregnant. I know. It's, it's been a, a lot's changed since I was here last, yeah. It's interesting because you kind of gave birth to a book then and you just gave birth to a new book this yeah, year. Yeah, it is. It's um, different kind of journeys, but there's some similarities too, I, I think. A lot of times that comparison is made of sending them out into the world when the book is published and when your child grows. So I can see that already a little bit. My son started school last week, so oh, I'm feeling like? a little nostalgic. <laughs> now might that make its way into right. something, a character or feeling absolutely. or something in the book somewhere? Absolutely. Already I can see how he's shifting my work and, and the things I'm interested in writing about. Yeah. As a creative writer, do you find yourself kind of banking things that you incur, uh, encounter in your life and saving them for maybe a character per Kirk or you know quirk or something like that? Sure. I mean, with him, I feel very protective of his privacy. So um, I don't imagine I'll use him in my work, but certainly you're always watching the world and keeping track of things you can use later. Absolutely. Now you're in town tonight to yes. be part of a forum talking about young adult fiction, which is kind of your forte. It is now, yeah, it seems that way. Yeah, <laughs> two books and it that's your forte yeah, now. <laughs> it wasn't intentional, but yeah. Um, so tonight I'll be speaking with Meg Medina, who is a local author, and just yesterday she was, um, it, they were, it was announced that she is on the long list for the National Book Award wow. for Young People's Literature. So I'm really excited to spend time with her today. So I'll be at Fountain Bookstore with her and Hannah Barnaby, two young adult authors. Now the, the topic of the, the speech is what's up with, if you read it, it's a, like what's up with young yeah. today, <laughs> it's but it's awkward. what's up with young, yeah, young adult books today. Yes. Do you find that, that young adult fiction has kind of really caught on not only with the younger readers, but with adult readers as well? Absolutely, absolutely. When I um, first acquired that label with my first novel, I got in touch with a librarian friend and I said, what do you think of this genre? What is it? I didn't know that much about it. And at the time he said it's the one um, genre we're actively buying for in the library. So it really has just taken off over the last five to ten years, which is, it's exciting. And I think now adults are more comfortable um, in those those shelves, you know, hanging out by those shelves in the bookstore. I think people aren't as um, embarrassed to be doing that anymore. It's more mainstream now, which is wonderful. Yeah, because what happens is I think that, that we get a little nostalgia when we're reading Absolutely, books that yeah. have a younger protagonist. Sure. And, and But the, the, the storylines are, are mature. And yeah. like with your new book or latest book, um, you've got a little bit of everything. You've got history, mystery, and, and a kind of a dual storyline going. Yes. I decided to make it as difficult as possible to write. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, in a way, I think it was a reaction to my first novel, which was fairly straightforward and, and not too complicated in terms of structure. So with this novel, I wanted to do something different. So it's based around a missing persons mystery. Um, and it's set in 2006 in San Francisco, which is the 100th anniversary of the 1906 earthquake. Mm -hmm. So that historical element really comes into play in terms of the grieving process of the central character who's um, essentially spending the summer trying to find her father who's, who's disappeared. I'm going to put you on the, the spot here and have uh -oh. you read the first line <laughs> oh, because sure. that kind of <clears throat> brings everybody into the story and kind of tells you where you're going. Sure. But you think where you think you're going. Right, right. <laughs> Okay. My father disappeared on a Tuesday that should have been like any Tuesday, but eventually became the Tuesday my father disappeared. It was April 18th, 2006. And basically we know now that we've got a mystery going somewhere right, in here. Right, right. You know, I think um, there was a couple of things I was really interested in writing about. The first was ambiguous loss, which is a loss when there's no confirmation that the person is, has is dead. And that is a very different kind of grieving process because the people that have been left behind are trying to hold on to hope, but also trying to move forward with their lives. And I was really interested in that dynamic, that balance. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of the crux of, of my own curiosity in terms of spending a year, two years writing one book. <laughs> so. As a creative writing teacher, do you find that you apply the things that you teach or do you just kind of say throw all those rules it's out the hard. window? And it's really hard. Um, you don't want to think too, sometimes the less you think the easier the work can be if you just um, 
jump into the project and let things happen organically. But as an instructor, I am constantly talking about our tools as writers, and that can be really useful to remind myself um, what you know, what things I can lean on when I get get into trouble in the novel. Yeah. Well, the book Invisible Fault Lines is a fabulous read. Uh, Thank once you. again, congratulations! Thank you so, so much. So, are you going to stay in the YA young adult genre? Or? I'm actually writing a picture book right now. I have a you know a toddler at home and reading a lot of picture books. I'm working on a picture book, and then I'm also working on another young adult novel too. Uh, picture books so. are hard. They're so <laughs> hard. I was shocked at how how hard they are. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, it's nice though to exercise different muscles of the brain. It's been a lot of fun. Well, so. folks will have a chance to kind of jump into your brain tonight. Yeah, uh, Krista thanks. Page Madonia will be part of tonight's conversation, What's Up with Young Adult These Days at the Fountain Bookstore in Shaco Slip. The event begins at 6.30 this evening. Going to be a lot of fun, a lot of interest. Uh, and we'll have a chance to get some books signed there, too? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks.